you've probably noticed a lot of people put boots in their dogs and you might be wondering why this is. Is this just like a fashion statement that these people are making? Dogs' paws are actually 10 times as absorbent as human hands. So whenever we have our dogs walking around a lot with us, like we do as service dog handlers, a lot of times your dog will be exposed to things on the roadway like oils and different things from vehicles, pesticides, cleaning fluids, everything that's just out in the world, you know, your dog can absorb it through their hand. This is geared more towards service dog handlers because our dogs are with us all the time. Our dogs have a lot higher risk of running across something like broken glass, like I said, fluids, pesticides, all types of things that could actually poison them or hurt them. As somebody who has their dog with them in the grocery store, I have actually run across where someone has broken a jam jar and there's glass everywhere. What happens if your dog steps on it? So before I ever saw that happen, I would let her go barefoot to the grocery store because I didn't think anything about it. I'm like, it's fine. You know, we're just going to the parking lot. Surely it's fine. It's not that far from the car. But then whenever I saw the broken jam jar, I was like, you know, that could be really, really bad because whenever glass breaks, it generally goes out everywhere. What if she steps in it? What if it's slid under the aisle in the next aisle and needs something off that aisle? How often does that happen? Another thing I noticed whenever I was letting her go barefoot to the grocery store, whenever I come and wash her feet, they'd be really, really, really nasty. I've had people say, just use a wipe. That doesn't do it. If you've ever actually put your dog's feet in the bathtub and wash them afterwards, the amount of nasty that comes off is ridiculous. Another thing you need to consider is heat and cold. If it's 77 degrees outside, the pavement is 127 degrees. If it's 85 degrees outside, the pavement's around 140 degrees. And if the air temperature is 102 degrees, the pavement is 167 degrees. So we really need to protect our dog's feet from things like that. Obviously, we wanna think about the cold temperatures as well. What really gets you in trouble is whenever there's like the crunchy ice that can cut their feet, stuff like that. Obviously, if you live in an area where there's putting ice melt on the road to try to you know, melt the ice and your dog's walking on that, that can be toxic to your dog and it can also hurt their feet as far as like have a chemical reaction to it if you don't get it cleaned off. So it's just a really good idea to put something on their feet to protect them from that. In the winter, you're not necessarily protecting their feet like to snuggle them up and keep them warm. That's not the idea as much as protecting them from sharp ice or the ice melt. Obviously, if you choose to put socks on your dog in their shoes, that's totally up to you. You can bundle them up if you want, but from what I've read, it is not necessary because your dog's feet actually, they can handle the cold. This is for typical dogs. Obviously, if you're doing some type of a cross country skiing situation out in the snow and you know, you're out in the snow a lot, that would be different. I'm talking about typical service dog activities where we're gonna be going in and out of the grocery store, maybe walking to the store, things like that. Now let's talk about the boots. So we really like the Ruffler Grip Trek boots. So these are an all weather boot, they're all terrain boot, and these are really cool because they're super grippy on the bottom. They're really flexible, so you can see they bend really well. So the way it's actually designed is there's like little grooves right here. So it bends with their foot. So your dog can actually like, you know, move their foot. So that's awesome. This top part is breathable, and then this is actually reflective. So if you need that, that's awesome. You just open them up, they're Velcro. You have your dog put their foot in there and then you can tighten it as tight as you need them to go. So at the time I'm filming, these come in three colors. They come in the blue, they also come in red and black. Leave a comment, let me know if your dog wears boots. Let me know if you've tried the rougher boots, if you love them, we love them, they're my favorite. Also let me know what color boots your dog has or what color boots you would get your dog if your dog was gonna wear boots. These have worn really great. Her first pair of these, they lasted, I wanna say around 500, maybe 600 miles before they started to like get to where, you know, you need to replace them. And we walk every day, you know, we go for walks every day. She wears her shoes whenever we go for a walk because we are walking on asphalt and you know, it's hot a lot of times where we live. I did a mileage test, so to speak, just because I know how much we actually walk. I knew she was wearing our shoes all the time. And so I figured it was around, you know, the 600 mile mark whenever they actually started to wear where you would need to replace them. So you can get a lot of use out of these, especially if you're not walking on solid concrete. So there's a common thing I see whenever people are talking about their dog's shoes not fitting properly. So first off, you wanna measure your dog's front feet and their back feet. 
Ruffwear sells their boots in pairs. So whenever you order a pair of Ruffwear boots, you're actually ordering two boots. So you need to order two pairs because you need a front pair and a back pair. But they sell them in pairs so you can get the right fit. A lot of times your dog's front feet are gonna be a different size than their back feet. So be sure to measure both. And the way you measure is you actually have your dog step down on a piece of paper and you draw straight on the outside of their feet, straight down, don't go in, just go straight down, and then you measure that. Just on the outside of their foot, you don't measure front to back, you only measure side to side, and you get the measurement there. Another thing I see come up is people say that the dew claw on their dog rubs whenever they put boots on. And we have not experienced that, Fairby does have our dew claws, but I think there's two ways you could possibly combat this if you did have a problem. First off, make sure that dew claw is actually filed smooth. I think a lot of people just blunt cut their dog's nails and they don't file them after and make them like smooth. So that's one thing to consider. If you need to, Roughwear does make socks. I've also seen people use baby socks. They feel like that works just as well. I've not tried baby socks, but that would be an option. The other thing I see people asking is how do you get the boots to stay on? because some people put the boots on and they don't tighten them tight enough. If they're turning or flying off, then you know you need to tighten them more. They're probably going to need to be tighter than you think they need to be. And if your dog's shoes are turning, it's not because the dog boots made weird, it's because either you don't have the right size or you don't have them tight enough. So whenever it comes to getting your dog used to wearing boots, you're gonna have to acclimate them to this. So no dog is just born being like, oh cool, put a boot on me. Some are gonna be, more okay with it than others and some are going to absolutely like you know pitch a fit and walk like this and everything else so what you should do is start by making sure your dog is comfortable with you touching their feet often so this is something you should be doing anyway just because paw care is super important so you should always be like cutting your dog's nails and you know rubbing stuff on their feet and stuff just to like make them used to their feet being touched. So if you haven't done that yet and you're considering getting boots, go ahead even before you get the boots and start making it, you know, a common thing for you to touch their feet, rub their feet, stuff like that. If your dog resists this, then just do it very, very gently. Ask them for their paw and then rub it. And then if they pull it away, that's okay. You can give them cookies, kind of bribe them on this if you need to. Um, but the point is, is to make sure they're comfortable with you actually touching their feet because whenever they put their little shoes on, they're gonna have something on their feet and it's gonna feel weird. So they need to be used to something actually touching their feet. Obviously, if you are a person with a brand new puppy, start this as soon as you can. Touch their feet, rub between their toes, rub their little bottom of their feet. You can get some paw balm if you want to and you know really massage that in there for them. They like that a lot. Usually, Farabee loved it, Bella loved it, Oscar loved it. Everyone's loved it, you know, just rub their little sweet baby feet. Yeah, so I'll link some paw balm that we like below for you guys as well. There really isn't much reason to use this if your dog's feet are already soft and, you know, well taken care of, but it is a nice little gesture and I'm sure it feels good. It feels good to have lotion on my feet, so I try to treat her and, you know, put lotion on her feet as well sometimes. So that's a great way to actually get your dog used to touching their feet and realize that it's a relaxing thing and that it's good because you don't want the first time that you really start messing with your dog's feet to be to put something on there that they're probably gonna think is weird. I mean, let's just be honest. Even if your dog is okay with it, they're still gonna be like, feel a little bit like it's weird because it is weird. It's shoes on dogs. It's strange. But you can get them acclimated to this where they'll like it. Now, whenever we go get ready to leave, Fairby actually puts her little hands and feet out for me to put her shoes on her. So, you know, it, it can morph into that. But at first she was like, you know, you're a weird lady, what are you doing to me? Another thing, service dog handlers. If you put boots on your dog, there is a really good chance your dog is gonna forget how to task. So you need to practice task with boots on. I don't know why that happens, but it happens. And even if they can walk really well in them, they're probably going to be like task, boots, it's a disconnect. I don't know why that happens, but it's a very common thing to have happen. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm gonna link a subscribe button up here. I'm also gonna link a service dog playlist here in a video just for you right here. Bye guys. <laughs>